today we stand on the threshold of a new golden age of space exploration. The first of three missions that will see humans return to the moon for the first time in five decades. The SLS or Space Launch System today rests on the stand, waiting to ignite its engines, taking the Orion capsule on a journey around the moon. This is an exciting launch for any true aerospace enthusiast, but Legitimate questions about the SLS have been raised, questions about its very existence. In an era of innovation that has allowed the private space industry to drastically reduce the cost of launch, why is NASA building its own completely unreusable rocket? Why has it cost so much money to manufacture and why does it exist at all? The SLS is a massive rocket, building on not just the legacy of the Saturn program, but the space shuttle program borrowing concepts and actual parts from each system. The SLS uses two solid rocket boosters. Together, they will produce more than 75% of the rocket's thrust at launch, burning five tons of propellant every six seconds and providing the equivalent thrust of 14 four-engined 747 jumbo jets each. These boosters are essentially the same boosters that flew on the space shuttle. In fact, they are using many leftover parts from the space shuttle program, with some updated designs to the nozzle and an additional fifth booster segment, giving this new generation booster 25% more fuel capacity over the shuttles. However, unlike the solid rocket boosters of the space shuttle, these boosters will not be recovered and refurbished. In an era where we can literally fly our boosters back to the ground, this seems like a strange choice. Why did NASA decide to go this route? To understand that, we have to look back in time. Two programs were cancelled in 2011, the Space Shuttle Program and the Constellation Program. We are all familiar with the Space Shuttle Program, but the Constellation Program is less known due to the fact it only ever flew a prototype rocket. The Ares prototype flew in 2009 and tested the Orion Launch Abort System. If that name sounds familiar, that's because Orion is the same spacecraft that will be flying on top of the SLS. The Orion spacecraft was originally designed for the Constellation program before its cancellation in 2011. In fact, if we look at the final planned Ares rocket design, the Ares 5, it bears a striking resemblance to the SLS. That's no coincidence. Just as parts from the space shuttle program were scavenged for the SLS, designs and employees were taken from the Constellation program. We see this pattern play out throughout the SLS's design. The giant orange insulation covered core stage, containing two gigantic propellant tanks holding 2 million litres of liquid hydrogen and 742,000 litres of liquid oxygen, will be feeding four RS-25 engines. These engines are not only the same design used in the space shuttle, but they are literally scavenged from previously flown space shuttles. The four engines for Artemis 1 have these serial numbers, and from that we can track their flight history. These engines have a rich history within NASA, bringing components of the ISS to orbit and flying astronauts to Hubble to repair and maintain it. These are tried and tested engines that in theory would save NASA money, but oddly, the SLS program's greatest criticism is its cost running up a bill of $23 billion. When Barack Obama released the US government's budget in 2010, the Constellation budget showed all zeros. The program was effectively cancelled. Obama's vision for NASA's future was for collaboration between commercial space partners like SpaceX while shifting NASA's budget and focus to projects which were not commercially viable, a vision that has largely come to fruition today. So, if the Constellation program was cancelled in 2010, how is this resurrected Frankenstein's monster standing on the pad today, ready to launch to the moon? The answer? Politics. This legislation will define NASA's future by building on its past. Obama's cancellation of the Constellation program was met with criticism from politicians from all over the United States. The elevated costs of the program was partially by design. NASA gained support in Congress by spreading jobs all across the United States, ensuring widespread support by the constituents of the politicians in each region. When the Constellation program was cancelled, it left thousands of people without work. 
people were understandably upset. This forced the Obama administration to backpedal, resulting in the NASA Authorization Act of 2010 being signed, providing NASA budget to both commercial space launch industry and, in effect, brought the Constellation program back from the dead under a new name, Artemis. The act even specified that NASA needed to reuse technology, contracts and workforce from the Constellation program. And so, here we are, 12 years later, with the ghost of Constellation flying to the moon, itself a Frankenstein's monster of space shuttle components. This is clearly not an efficient way of developing a rocket. Cancelling one over budget project and then bringing it back a couple of months later with added design restrictions. That's perfectly obvious to anyone and everyone involved. It's just how bureaucracy in a democratic system shakes out sometimes. Could that money have been better spent elsewhere? Absolutely. Would it have been spent to NASA without the intentional cost inefficiencies? Probably not. This was a jobs program where we get an incredible rocket as the output. The SLS, despite its inefficiencies, is undeniably cool. The sound of solid rocket boosters is something I have dreamt of experiencing. I don't think anyone with an honest love of aerospace can look at this machine and not be in awe. It looks like someone asked Midjourney to create a hybrid of the Saturn V and Space Shuttle. And perhaps that's nostalgia for an era I was born too late to experience, but that era took us to the moon. I have a tattoo of Buzz Aldrin on the moon on my leg. To say I'm excited is an understatement. This machine, if all goes to plan, is going to take us back to the moon. With the progress happening in the commercial space industry following hot on NASA's heels, we will have cheaper heavy lift rockets capable of taking us to the moon and further. NASA won't need to funnel money into a project like this again, instead being able to focus on projects like the James Webb Telescope. This is an exciting time in aerospace and human space flight after a lull of more than 50 years. Times are changing. This is a stepping stone to a permanent human habitat on the moon and maybe someday Mars. I grew up watching documentaries about the moon missions, always with a little bit of sadness that I didn't get to experience that live broadcast with the rest of the world. Documentaries like Hack the Moon, Armstrong and Crisis on Apollo 13 felt like watching a Marvel movie. Real life superheroes. You can relive that nostalgia and get excited for this new generation of heroes and stories by watching these documentaries on CuriosityStream for $14.79 a year, an insanely low price. These are just a small collection of the aerospace and aviation documentaries available on CuriosityStream. And you will also get access to my new aviation history documentary series, The Battle of Britain on Nebula. Nebula is our creator-owned streaming platform that allows us to release work that may not work on YouTube. In our newly released episode, we explore the ground-based anti-aircraft technologies employed by Britain to protect its cities and strategic resources, diving into the technology and statistics to discover just how effective this often debated tactic was. You can watch that along with other originals, like Wendover Productions' new episode of Extremities on Wake Island, a tiny remote island in the center of the Pacific, just big enough to fit a military runway that played a pivotal role in World War II. You will get access to both Nebula and CuriosityStream for just $14.79 a year. It's one of the best deals on the internet right now, and it helps support this channel to keep bringing you the videos you love.